Uh, for either of you, there was that seven minute stretch in the second quarter where you didn't have a field goal. Just what was the halftime message? Mm -hmm. How did you kind of bounce back from that in the second half? Uh, the idea is to be as fluid as we can. Um, obviously we, we were defending them well, but we got to make them pay by scoring. Um, and the ball didn't go in. So for us, it was about making sure that we obviously, you know, execute what we needed to. Um, but that third quarter is always a big one for us. Uh, third quarters are, are like can be our Achilles heel. So. The transition for us from halftime to third quarter was to kind of stay focused on the first five minutes um, and then being, ex being able to execute and defend at the same time. Uh, for either of you, coming off these last few days where you finally had a chance to practice some, to get to take a breath, was there anything that you'd worked on specifically over the last couple of days that you felt was able to shine through tonight? Uh, I mean, I think we... We honestly just ran through a ton of our plays. Like yeah, I feel like we've gone we from like we've only been able to put stuff in through and walkthroughs and shoot arounds and like we haven't had time to like actually work on it versus live competition versus our practice boys. And you know, we worked a lot on our defense too. We worked a lot versus the blitz, um, because we've just been getting blitz so much on ball screens this year. So it was good to get in the gym and be able to work on that with our four four and five player and myself and um Edub and Wally, whoever's taking care of the ball, um, just to get a little bit more comfortable and know our exact reads out of those. So I would say all those things, but it wasn't anything like complex. It was just like a, you know, simple practice of like getting to actually play live and work on, you know, set plays and our defense and things like that. Well, I started off missing my first two, so it was kind of annoying because both of them were pretty open. Um, but I think just keep shooting. That's what shooters do. And honestly, I thought my teammates set really good screens. And I think that just shows like when you set and use screens, like no matter what you're running, even if the other team knows it, like it can still be really effective. Katie Lou set a couple of really great screens um, and got me open. Um, so I was just able to create off of those and, you know, as a shooter, once, once you see, you know, one and two go in, you know, it, the basket just looks bigger and bigger. So that's kind of what I was feeling. Hi, Caitlin, uh, reflecting back on you envisioning what it would be like in the WNBA, what surprised you the most in terms of how things have gone for you so far this season? Uh, any big surprises that stand out in your mind? Something maybe you didn't expect? Um, I wouldn't say anything surprising. Um, I mean, the physicality is, I mean, I knew what I was getting into. Um, maybe some people didn't really know what was the circumstances of the WNBA, but me personally, I know, you know, this is one of the best leagues in the world. Um, the players are really, really good. So I wouldn't say anything surprising. Like I've been a big fan of this league all my life. Like, you know, you're, you're starting a new chapter and new part of your career, becoming a professional athlete. Not everything's going to click overnight. That's not, not what this is, but keep working and keep grinding and, um, you know, to come over time. Caitlin, this morning you mentioned you take a second being that this is your first season to, to walk around, soak up the gym, soak up all of these experiences. And you said every city and every gym is unique in its own sense. What was unique about this experience tonight? I mean, the crowds never get old. I think, you know, they're great. I think at times they might have been cheering for us. I'm not really sure. I could have sworn they were booing when calls didn't go our way, but maybe I was just being a little delusional. I'm not sure. Um, but I mean, it's just really fun. It's fun to see people in fever gear. It's fun to see people screaming about women's basketball. Um, you know, that's not anything you take for granted. And um, I'm just I'm just lucky I get to play this game because there's a lot of people that would kill to, to be a part of this league. It's one, the hardest league to be a part of. Um, a lot of people that would kill to be on this team and get a play in front of fans like this. So um, I'm just grateful, honestly. Go the last one, third row on the left. For Kelsey. Yeah, I'd love this to be for, for Kelsey, for mm -hmm. both of you. Um, I, I was just looking it up, and I think this is right. I'll have to double check, but uh, there were more than 20,000 people here tonight, and I think that's the most people who've watched a Fever game this season. And, you know, Kelsey especially, like, having played for the Fever last season, <laughs> You know, it's not your rookie year. Like, is that, does that feel different to you playing in front of 17,000, 18,000, 20,000 here tonight? I mean, I, that's more than the Wizards typically get here, you know? So, like, how does that feel to you? Uh, I think I'm a part of history. So, shit, I'll take it. Um, obviously, it's a good, dark, good thing for women's basketball. Um, I'm playing alongside this kid. So, it makes everything, you know, a little bit more dramatic and like the people are coming out to see this person. So, we just do what we can. Uh, we embrace it. I'm pretty sure our organization can feed off of it. Our, you know, state of Indiana. So I think for us, we're going to utilize this energy for as much as we can possibly use it um, and be happy that the women's basketball and the game where it's going is pretty positive. So.